the government's very fearful of losing control. You see with the tea parties. You see with the protests. You see with the anger on the streets. If they could put a GPS thing under your car without a court order and follow you around? Yeah, it's Big Brother, and they're there, and they're watching you. When they told us why 9-11 happened, they said, Oh, because they hate our freedom and liberty. Well, I guess they're fixing that, aren't they? No more freedom or liberty. The United States is no longer the land of the free. Americans live in a system with literally millions of unnecessary government regulations that have destroyed the free market and sent millions of well-paying jobs overseas. Americans today are constantly watching their speedometers and trying to conform to every little rule, yet there are so many rules that it's impossible for even the most honest and hard-working Americans not to be breaking some type of law on a daily basis. We are slaves in a criminal monetary system where the Federal Reserve steals from the middle class through inflation and transfers this wealth to their banker friends on Wall Street. We are forced to accept pieces of paper as money when the U.S. Constitution defined only gold and silver as legal tender. NIA has already proven in our previous documentaries, Melt Up, The Dollar Bubble, and Hyperinflation Nation, that the U.S. dollar will soon become worthless and Americans will see the purchasing power of their savings and income destroyed. However, the impending currency, fiscal, and debt crisis is no longer NIA's greatest concern. We are now seeing countless signs on a daily basis that the U.S. is headed for a complete societal collapse that will end civilization as we know it forever. You're actually breaking the law, breaking the law if you try to capture rain falling under your roof and pour it on your flower bed. Obviously, if you use the water upstream, it won't be there for the person to use it downstream. So what about the little guy watering with rainwater at home? Will anybody do anything about that violation of the law? If she really does do that, then she ought to have a water right to do it. The average American is reaching a boiling point. There is no common sense left in America. NIA has received hundreds of emails from members who are over 65 years old and are being carded to buy alcohol at major retailers like Target and Walmart. One NIA member has a son in the second grade who was suspended from school for one full year and told to await a threat assessment meeting for doodling a small rocket in his notes during class. 15-year-old Adam Hernandez, a high school freshman in Shorewood, Wisconsin, was recently arrested, handcuffed, and booked on a charge of theft after a friend let him have his lunch. Adam's friend was part of the school's free lunch program, but Adam wasn't. So eating his friend's $2.60 chicken nugget meal was stealing, according to school officials. So Adam said his side of the story. They did not believe him. His friend Jakari, who gave him the chicken nuggets, they did not believe him. What they chose to do was to handcuff him, arrest him at lunch in front of the school body and put him in jail. Federal agencies have now put six-year-old girls on the no-fly list as potential terrorist threats. And even three-year-old girls are now being harassed for no reason by TSA agents at airports. Six-year-old Alyssa Thomas is like any little girl. Ta-da! She loves her dolls, <laughs> and she's already excited about the first grade. But according to the U.S. government, you should be worried about what she's up to. Dr. Santosh Thomas was just made aware that his oldest daughter is on the list. 
the terror watch list that impacts travelers who could be a threat to national security. Here, a TSA employee we've decided not to show is patting down Mandy while my wife holds her. First, they tried a handheld metal detector. Mandy was not in the mood. And the TSA employee, well, in my opinion, did not know how to communicate to her. Americans can't even bring applesauce through security at an airport without getting arrested. Supervisor Atkins of the TSA inspects Nadine Hayes' blue ice chest and finds items such as yogurt, grapes, sliced cheese, milk, cottage cheese, applesauce, and soda, which were all essential food items for the hydration and health of her 93-year-old invalid wheelchair-bound mother, Eleanor. Supervisor Atkins refuses to compromise and rudely stated, we are going to confiscate everything. With this remark, Nadine reaches for the ice chest with her mother's food. Supervisor Atkins gives up possession to screener Teta and a tug of war over the ice chest begins. Nadine is very upset that she will not have her 93-year-old mother's food items, but is still going to try to make the impending flight. She then takes the now empty ice chest and gathers the rest of her belongings. Supervisor Atkins appears to find this all rather humorous as seen by her broad smile to her colleague. Melee is finally given back her charge of Eleanor. With no assistance forthcoming, the TSA has abandoned an invalid 93-year-old woman and her caregiver. Nadine has been cuffed and has been put in an awaiting police car with no explanation as to why they are doing this to her. Things are getting so bad at our airports that if your ticket says Brad, but your ID says Bradley, there is a chance that you won't be allowed to fly without getting strip searched and interrogated by Homeland Security. Last year, the state of Missouri issued a secret report entitled The Modern Militia Movement, designed to help police identify militia members or domestic terrorists. The report labeled libertarians, and more specifically, supporters of third-party political candidates like Ron Paul, Bob Barr, and Chuck Baldwin as potentially being a domestic terrorist or members of a militia. Right after this report came out, a Ron Paul supporter who was leaving a Campaign for Liberty fundraiser in St. Louis was detained at the St. Louis airport for having Ron Paul bumper stickers on him and $4,700 in cash, which came from the sales of Ron Paul books and t-shirts at the fundraiser. Let's listen to some of the shocking audio from his encounter with TSA agents. I'm just trying to ask some questions to figure out what all this is about so I can get you on your plane. But you won't play smart and I'm not going to play your game. How much money is it? I don't know the exact amount, sir. The, the card says about $4,700. $4,700? Yes, sir. Why do you have all this money? I, as my, I asked her, sir, if I'm required by law to answer the question. That's my question. I'm just asking you why you have $4,700. I understand. That's my question. I don't understand well, do you want, law. Do you want to talk to EEA about it? They can, they'll probably ask If they can tell me if I'm required to answer the law or question, I'll answer the question. That's, I'm just asking, looking for a simple, a simple question. question. I just want to know why you have 47 dollars That's not an usual thing. I care if I need 50 bucks. With he refuses to answer any questions. He don't, he don't want to answer. So we're going to have to take him down to the yeah, station I mean, that's and let, let DEA, FBI, and, and all those people talk to him. Every one of them. You're suspicious okay. to me. You're just from your answers. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to take you. Am I being forced to the station or am I free to go? You will be. You, you, don't you, walk you, out you want to call the force? Yes, you'll be going to the station. You'll be forced. Okay. That's fine. That's, yeah. I understand. You're, you're going to be going to the station. Now, do we have to put you in handcuffs or will we have a problem no, sir. with you I'm, walking through this uh, no, sir. terminal? No, sir. You're detained. Yes. Okay. That's, that's fine, sir. I don't understand the law. I'm, I'm happy to go. Well, we're going to help you understand if you don't. Americans' rights and personal liberties are being trampled on. Earlier this year, when the public expressed their concerns about airports adding full body scanners that allow them to see your body fully naked, the TSA stated, And as an additional precaution, the image won't be stored, transmitted, or printed, and deleted immediately once viewed. The TSA and other federal agencies flat out lied to the public. The U.S. Marshal Service has now admitted that over 35,000 naked images of Americans from the full body scanner used at the federal courthouse in Orlando, Florida have been stored between the months of February and July of this year alone. NIA believes that these full body scanners are unconstitutional and violate fundamental human rights. The mainstream media has worked tirelessly to calm Americans' privacy fears by showing altered images from these scanners with blocked out genitals. The truth is, these scanners produce images that make human genitals fully visible and a simple computer technique 
of inverting the image produces an image that is in full lifelike color. One of the things I've learned to hate the most is to travel on airplanes. What a humiliating experience. Everybody's guilty until proven innocent. You know, come on. You think they're going to do the same airplane trick again? How about calling this making a lot of money? It's just another way to make money, intimidate the people, and keep them in control. Look, you go into any office building and you got to go through this stupid routine of showing your identification, your license, getting the picture taken. Come on. You know, it's not like I just landed on the planet last year. The rush to install naked body scanners in airports came right after the failed underwear bombing in Detroit, which NIA believes was taken way out of proportion by the media in an effort to help their corporate friends make billions off of the American public. What if, God forbid, there is another isolated terrorist attack in the U.S., but this time at a shopping mall? Will all shopping malls be forced to implement naked body scanners? What about schools, rail stations, bus terminals, and even high-traffic city streets? NIA believes that keeping Americans safe at home should be the primary goal of the U.S. government, but in no way should Homeland Security be used to violate Americans' privacy and constitutional rights. NIA has just learned that if you buy a new Toyota at a dealership in San Diego, the sales transaction is now videotaped in order to satisfy a requirement of Homeland Security which they claim is to prevent the laundering of drug or terrorist money. If you are driving on a New York State highway and pay your toll with a denomination over $20, the New York State Thruway Authority collector must collect your license plate number and report you to the Department of Homeland Security. These Homeland Security measures are infringing on our rights and not making our country the slightest bit safer. The U.S. today is experiencing a merger of state and corporate power. The average small business owner in America is being squeezed by government, forcing Americans to rely on a select few corporations that have all the wealth and power. Business is booming at Vernon Hershberger's farm. I'll show you. Customers are lining up in record numbers to get their hands on his raw milk illegal raw milk. We should have the right to choose what types of foods and what types of uh, drinks that we want to put into our bodies. Wednesday, state inspectors raided the farm with a search warrant. While serving the warrant, they not only put tags and tape on the coolers inside the store, they came in here where people actually get their raw milk out of a tank and they poured a dye inside the tank. <laughs>months ago 20 agents raided Rossum Foods in Ventura County, California with a search warrant, ordering workers to put down their buckets of mashed coconut cream and to step away from the nuts. This was the third time this same farm had been raided in three months. Sharon Palmer, owner of Rossum Foods, thought she was on her way to resolving the problem over labeling of her goat cheese after the first two raids, but apparently not. It's pretty shocking how the police and district attorney in California have absolutely nothing better to do than harass honest, hardworking farmers who are growing and sharing natural, healthy, organic foods. As part of the raid, Sharon's 12-year-old daughter Jasmine had her computer taken and her homework lost. Jasmine still hasn't received back her computers from the two previous raids. All across the U.S., small organic food co-ops are being raided by police with guns drawn. Farmers are being treated no different than cocaine kingpins and are being charged with such things as illegally selling raw milk. These food co-ops are guilty of nothing other than sharing healthy food with people in their local communities. However, they are obviously a threat to the large agricultural corporations that pay off our elected representatives in Washington. 
Americans need to speak out now to help protect small farmers from the FDA and other government agencies that have been hijacked by the greedy and destructive billion dollar agricultural giants. They're putting the people out of business, particularly at a time when people want more organic food. They don't want Auschwitz Farms eggs coming from, I love the names like Sunnydale Farms, you know, Hillendale Farms, chicken coop concentration camps. People want a higher quality and they know that they're going to erode the profit base of these large corporations that work on very thin margins. So they're putting them out of business. They're making it more and more difficult for them to compete. Competition's all but dead and they keep killing it more and more. Every private individual in America deserves to have the basic human right to buy farmland and cows and share their production of food with others. With the government trying to destroy small farmers because they are a threat to the market share of major agricultural corporations, it's a sure sign that a U.S. breakdown of society is imminent. The government claims to be trying to protect our health, but any American with common sense knows that the natural food produced on these small farms is a lot more healthy than the food produced by large corporations that are loaded with artificial preservatives and other unnatural ingredients. The police obviously know they are in the wrong if they have to show up with such excessive force that is clearly unwarranted for the situation. Imagine if one of the workers at the farm was using their thermal laser temperature guns while the raid was taking place. The cops would have most likely shot and killed the worker knowing full well that no one would hold them accountable for their actions. Illinois Senator Richard Durbin recently introduced a new bill, S-510, the FDA Food Safety Modernization Act. This could be the most dangerous and destructive bill ever introduced in our nation's history. If enacted, it will make it illegal to grow, share, trade, or sell homegrown food. This legislation is so broad that someone with a backyard garden could get fined and have their property seized. It's written so broadly that they can come and shut us down and it scares the farmers out here. They may decide it's not worth the risk to lose my land. This bill seeks to effectively put all U.S. food and farms under the control of the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Defense. NIA finds it outrageous for something this unconstitutional to even be considered, but it already has a shocking 17 co-sponsors in the U.S. Senate. Most Americans would be shocked to learn that there is already an executive order that allows the government to take over all food resources and farms during a crisis. NIA believes that all executive orders are unconstitutional because it allows the president to enact a law without approval from Congress. According to the U.S. Constitution, if the president wants to pass new laws during a national emergency, he must call Congress into an emergency session. During the Great Depression, Congress enacted the Agricultural Adjustment Act, which paid farmers to destroy their crops in an attempt to artificially raise food prices. This increased the duration of the Great Depression, which would have ended a lot sooner without it. Declining food prices due to technological advances should have allowed Americans to maintain their standard of living even with rapidly falling wages. However, the Agricultural Adjustment Act led to millions of Americans overpaying for food and nearly starving to death. In the Great Depression, rabbits uh, saved a lot of people from starving. I mean, you can look it up. And uh, in America, they've always been typic typically pets. So people, they, they don't look at them like in Europe where it's, uh, you know, a food source. Right. But uh, like I said, right now they're just pets and hopefully it never comes down to that because they are cute. The U.S. is currently on the brink of a major food crisis that will lead to millions of Americans starving to death this decade. In October of 2009, NIA predicted that inflation would appear next in food and agriculture. In just the past few months alone, coffee prices have gained 40%, pork belly prices have gained 50%, and wheat prices have gained over 100%. Being in the restaurant business, I have the luxury of going to uh, Restaurant Depot to buy in bulk for substantially less money. 
Have you been seeing a lot of inflation over the past month? I was in Restaurant Depot two days ago. And the last time I was there was about a week and a half prior to that. And uh, coffee went from $16 for, for a five pound bag of beans up to $18.50. Over the summer, that same bag was $15 back in August. Rice went from $26 for 100 pounds to $29. Um, sugar went from $22 for 50 pounds to $28. Wow. Flour is $13 for 50 pounds up to $15.50. Beef used to be, uh, I don't pay too much attention to the beef only because I get it locally all natural, but I, I do kind of glance at the prices. Beef over the summer was, uh, for the chopped meat, I remember that was $1.79, it's, it's two oh nine now for the same amount. Okay. Um, cheese, like mozzarella cheese, went from $1.59 a pound to two oh nine a pound. That happened pretty rapidly. In December of 2009, NIA said catastrophic food shortages were possible beginning in 2010, not just in the U.S., but all around the world. NIA was right. There is a major food shortage currently taking place in Pakistan due to flooding. This is just a preview of the food shortage that will soon take place in the U.S. due to hyperinflation. Overwhelmed by desperate survivors, this truck simply cannot ensure aid is delivered to those hit by the devastating floods. This would-be good citizen beats back the people he's trying to help. Without a coordinated effort by the government or aid groups, delivering supplies becomes a piecemeal effort that often falls short of what's needed. The scale of this disaster is overwhelming, and the lack of a centralized effort means that good intentions can go to waste. In these storage bins, you know, I don't know if it looks like a lot of food to you guys or not, but I could break it down and pretty tell you how, pretty much tell you how much of everything. Yeah, I mean, why don't you go go through it a little bit? I mean, we're in, I'm interested to to know. Um, there's different ones with pasta. Like I said, the macaroni I have about 300 pounds. Uh, this is salt. I have 150 pounds of salt. You need to dip most foods in water and salt before you you put it in a dehydrator. Mm. There's 400 pasta's pounds. Pasta's great to have, it seems, you know, because you know. You, yeah, I you know. You always have it. It fills you up. The you calories, know, I, you know, I try. It's not that expensive. I try and go by by the calories. You know, how many calories you're going to need to, you know, do what you have to do if right. you, if you can't go to the supermarket uh, and buy things that are beneficial for your body. Where pasta is not. I got that because my wife, she wanted it. I wasn't buying any until she kind of oh, yeah. demanded it. Yeah, I was buying. I have like 400 pounds of beans, dried beans. The bags look like this. If you could see it, I got these things duct tape. I'll tell you about the storage when I'm, when I'm done talking about that. But I've got 400 pounds of beans, 400 pounds of uh, dried peas. Um, there's 400 pounds of flour. This is some of the flour here. Right. Um, in that one, there's baking soda. I have baking powder. There's like a year's worth of tea bags. It knows there's 200 pounds of rice in there. I have about a thousand pounds of rice. The rice and the dried beans are, in my opinion. If you don't have, uh, if you're working on a limited budget like I am, right. and like most people are, I, I think for the money, the rice and beans are probably the best thing for you in right. terms of nutrition, calories, proteins, carbohydrates. I think it's a good mixture of what you're going to need. Um, this sugar, I have 200 pounds of sugar, which if I use it all or barter it, you know. I yeah. Don't know. Because you got to think not only for yourself to eat, but also oh, yeah. to have enough to yeah. barter if you need something else. Pe or... People are going to want, I have about a year's worth of coffee beans. This this is the bag of coffee. I have about a year's worth of this stuff. Because uh, this will be another, I drink coffee every morning. But this went from $15 in, in late August to $16 a week and a half ago to eighteen fifty two days ago. Wow. So, coffee's pretty expensive. This is something... If the business opens soon, I'll buy a lot of this, and I, I know this will be valuable. This will be a valuable commodity to trade with people. I think in total, between upstairs and there's like 30 tubes of toothpaste. I have 30 toothbrushes, dental floss. I have like 50 bottles of shampoo, toilet paper. I think toilet paper is going to be uh, in demand when everything falls apart. You know, Everybody's so accustomed to <laughs> having these things, you know? I'd rather have it in storage and not take the chance of having to use a leaf. While most Americans today are concerned about making their mortgage payments, that will soon be the least of their concerns. Hyperinflation will effectively wipe out the debts of most Americans as it will allow them to pay off their mortgages with depreciated U.S. dollars. Unfortunately, hyperinflation will make the lives of Americans far worse off because it will cost thousands of dollars just to fill your refrigerator with food. 
Not only is the merger of state and corporate power destroying the agricultural sector, but it is also sabotaging U.S. health care. The American Psychiatric Association is now trying to con Americans with the pushing for the invention of a new mental disorder, healthy eating disorder. That's right. If you are focused on eating healthy foods, the healthcare industry wants to diagnose you with having a disease so that it can sell you dangerous medicines to help cure it. This is similar to how they invented phony mental disorders like ADHD and manic depressive so that they can make billions by poisoning you. Uh, Jim Kaiser turned himself into the 4th Avenue jail today. He believes everything he did was within his rights as a parent, but now he's an accused felon. Ben Kaiser's mom said he has ADHD. A doctor in the courts agreed, so they decided to put him on medicine. I, I just can't bring myself to do it. Dad disagreed. These drugs, in my opinion, are child abuse. It's, it's just insane. You take a perfectly normal kid and you just wipe him out with these drugs just so he can sit still in school. Jim Kaiser saw the writing on the wall. Ben's mom was going to get custody. So he took his nine-year-old and disappeared. Basically dropped off the grid. Uh, apartment found vacant. Uh, no more phone calls. No more use of a credit card, nothing. For three and a half months, police had no luck tracking them down. A random traffic stop in Florida spoiled Jim's plans. Ben's mom flew to Florida to get him back. She said she plans to keep him on the medicine because it helps. Isn't it possible that everyone else is right and you're wrong? No, it's impossible. I know my son better than anybody in the world. I've spent more time with him than anybody in the world, including his mom, and I know him a whole lot better than the courts do. I know sometimes we, we may not agree with everything that's happening, but that's the system that we have, and it's the best system uh, that we have to work with right now. The FDA has brainwashed Americans with the belief that only toxic and poisonous chemicals called prescription drugs can cure anybody of anything, and that no whole plant food or whole food supplement can heal anyone from anything. This is the exact reverse of the truth, yet many brilliant doctors and researchers have had their reputations ruined and their businesses destroyed for daring to help heal people of diseases by something so simple as changing their diets and lifestyles. The FDA does not care about the health of Americans. They care only about the wealth of their corporate friends. The FDA is trying to ban electronic cigarettes because they are becoming a threat to the success of tobacco companies. But these cigarettes do not have tobacco. You're eliminating the 3,000 chemicals that make up an actual tobacco-filled cigarette. These are electronic cigarettes. They contain one highly addictive ingredient, nicotine, and run on a battery. It warms up a cartridge of liquid nicotine, creating a vapor similar to smoke. You're getting just what you need, and it's, uh, it's the nicotine. The fact is, the Food and Drug Administration isn't sure. It's investigating. But right now, the FDA tells New Center 5 there is no scientific evidence that e-cigarettes are safe. They have stopped the import of this device into the United States, and it's possible that soon they will stop the sale of this product. Honest, hardworking Americans are now being punished by the government for doing good deeds to help other people. Do you think that you broke the law? No. No. Ben Bond never believed putting a few coins in a few parking meters could lead to this. The handcuff marks are still on my hands. The 30-year-old was arrested by Eugene police Wednesday, charged with harassment and obstruction of governmental administration after a run-in with one of the city's parking enforcement officers. Changing like that and... What sparked the incident was what Bond considered an act of kindness putting coins in the expired parking meters of strangers. This is video from last summer when we first introduced you to Jonathan Shonacase and his courtesy ride service. He says it's a free service that takes people home if they feel they've had too much to drink. Shonacase says if someone offers him a tip, he will accept, and that violates the city's taxi limousine ordinance. Over the weekend, Quincy police officers set up a sting operation to catch Shonacase in the act of violating that city ordinance. In an even bigger abuse of power, the Office of Code of Enforcement in Indianapolis, Indiana, recently called upon their SWAT team as a final move against a property owner who let his grass grow higher than one foot. 
This represents a major infringement on Americans' personal property rights. SWAT teams today have fewer restrictions on conducting forced entry raids than do U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Americans today don't even have the freedom to talk on the phone on a street corner. Without any provocation, this police officer decided to take a man talking on the phone and slam him to the ground. To protect the officers, the police camera magically pans away. But the cop was later shown purposely slamming his car door on the ankle of the victim. We were recently contacted by a member of NIA who lives in Florida. Police are literally checking people's cars to see if they're unlocked. This member literally went out for five minutes to get some coffee. When he came back, his doors were locked. And inside was a flyer that said it was the sheriff's department and he needed to make sure his door was locked. Literally leaving a little yellow pamphlet. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Shouldn't Americans have the right, have the choice to lock something or not lock something or have the convenience of not wanting to lock their doors? I mean, what if the man had a key that was broken? and he wasn't able to get inside of his car after it was locked. I'll imagine the inconvenience this government intrusion into his life would have caused for the rest of his day. Some states are now making it a crime to videotape out of control cops. A Harper County man now faces up to five years in prison after he recorded a bizarre traffic stop last month in Harper County. He accepted the speeding ticket he says he deserved and did nothing more than just post this video on YouTube. It was all but forgotten until this morning when he was served a warrant and now faces the charge of illegal monitoring with his helmet camera. State police believe they have a case. In Maryland, you cannot record someone audibly without them knowing. It is a felony. But Graber argues it was obvious and points to this picture of the camera on top of his helmet. A common practice, he says, with riders. Most Americans today, especially our youth, no longer think for themselves. Their minds are preoccupied and distracted by trivial matters like Jersey Shore. They absolutely take no interest in learning the truth about the U.S. economy and politics. We constantly elect puppet politicians to Washington who know nothing other than to bribe voters with promises of entitlements that we can't afford without printing the money and stealing from other Americans. Politicians don't have anything to give. They can only take. They can only take and give to others. It's like a politician saying they create jobs. They don't create jobs. They just take money from one group of people and pay another group of people. Politicians cannot create jobs. American innovators, business creators, entrepreneurs with the lack of red tape, not more red tape, deregulation, not more regulations, that's what will create jobs in this country. Only 58% of our government spending is paid for through taxation. The U.S. government is so desperate to keep that number from declining to below 50% that the IRS will stop at nothing to get every single penny of taxes it's owed. I came into the car wash, handed my manager a bill, and it was from the Internal Revenue Service. They said, we need you to pay up your back taxes. But when they looked at the bill... Because the amount was four cents, four pennies. Four pennies. Four pennies, yes, ma'am. Zeph couldn't believe two agents drove to his business to hand deliver a bill for just pennies. And once I found out the amount, then I started to actually chuckle. But Zeph stopped laughing when he took a closer look. After three years of penalties and fees, the four cent back tax skyrocketed to more than $200. Even state and local governments are going crazy to collect every penny that is owed to them. The wife of one NIA member in Omaha, Nebraska, recently started cleaning houses in order to generate extra income so that their family can begin accumulating physical silver to protect themselves during hyperinflation. After handing out just a few hundred flyers in their neighborhood with no other advertising, and before she even began cleaning any houses, the state sales tax office called her and said she didn't have a sales tax permit and that she needed to get one immediately to begin collecting sales tax. Although the federal government has a printing press to fund their spending that goes beyond what can be raised through taxation, state and local governments have no such option. Local law enforcement today are waiting behind every tree with radar guns and stopping otherwise law-abiding citizens for seatbelt violations in what can be described in no other way than a desperate revenue grab to help balance the budget and keep their jobs.
This is causing some Americans to go insane and act in inappropriate ways. So the conversation's over. You can complain to the chief of police. That's not a problem. You can go to court and complain to the judge. That is not a problem. The cops are everywhere. You go over a yellow line, man, boom, they got you. They're waiting. They're all over. Oh, it's not quotas. Oh, no, no. Yeah, it is. They got them on tape in New York, talking in New York City, talking about the quotas. Because after I bounce you to a different platoon for inactivity, the next thing is to put you on paper, start rating you below standards, and look to fire you. I really don't have a problem firing people. I don't need to carry them. They're counting seatbelts and cell phones. They're counting double parkers and bus stops. If day tours contributed with five seatbelts and five cell phones a week, five double parkers and five bus stops a week, but you as the bosses have to demand this and have to count it. Your goal is five in each of these categories. Not a difficult task. It could be accomplished on Monday. If it's not accomplished by Monday, you've got to follow up with it by Tuesday. But there's no reason why it can't be done by Thursday. All right. So whatever I get Friday, Saturday, or Sunday is gravy. I'm not looking to break records here. NIA has been hearing from members in Los Angeles that at LAX, parked cars in the airport parking lot are now being cited for expired registrations, no front plate, tinted windows, and other vehicle code violations. This kind of behavior was previously unheard of, but with state and local governments near bankruptcy, they simply have no other choice. Even more outrageous, in San Francisco, the police have started a pilot program that is training civilians to do their work for them. The whole idea behind civilian investigators is to speed up response times, save money, and to free up sworn officers so they can focus on more important things. The way it is right now in San Francisco, sworn officers respond to nonviolent crimes such as burglaries and car break-ins. But under a pilot program, 15 civilian investigators, who would cost about half as much as officers, will be assigned to respond to those types of cases. They will be trained to collect evidence, conduct interviews, and photograph crime scenes. The six-month pilot program is scheduled to begin in January. It will cost nearly a million dollars. The 15 civilian investigators are set to work in only a couple of San Francisco's 10 district stations. NIA considers this to be a perfect example of how fiscally inept major cities in the U.S. are today. San Francisco thinks they will be saving money by paying 15 civilians nearly one million dollars for six months of work. That equals out to about $67,000 per civilian or over $133,000 per civilian on an annualized basis, and they say this will cut their costs in half? Does this mean that police officers in San Francisco are now being paid $267,000 per year? Not only will this plan make San Francisco's budget an even bigger disaster than it is today, but it will have the unintended consequence of encouraging more burglaries and other forms of theft in the city because no evidence that is collected by civilians is going to hold up in court. NIA has learned about the latest scheme cities are using in a sad and desperate attempt to generate revenue. It is now becoming common practice in major cities that if the police are called to an apartment building for a verbal dispute or other minor incidents, the city building inspector will come along with the police officer. If they find any minor violation, such as a rusted heat vent or a missing crawl space door, they will red tag the building, fine you thousands of dollars, and force you to spend thousands of dollars for a building permit to make the repairs and require that the landlord get hotel rooms for the tenants until the repairs are made. Even more shocking, the city of Philadelphia is now requiring that any resident who runs an internet blog pay a $300 business privilege license fee. One blogger in Philadelphia, Marilyn Bess, recently received a letter from the city demanding that she pay the $300 business privilege license fee to run her Miss Philly organic blog. Miss Bess is currently unemployed and this personal blog of hers only earns about $50 per year in income. A countless number of cities and municipalities across the country are now cracking down on garage sales. Many towns now require that you pay for a garage sale permit. 
Some towns even require you to pay an additional fee for a permit to place each garage sale sign. The federal government even recently passed a new law making it a crime to sell recalled products at a garage sale. Now the Bruchians were hoping to clear out some clutter and make some much needed cash this summer. What they don't know is they could be breaking a federal law right now and this garage sale could potentially end up costing them $15 million. The 2008 Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act was passed to keep dangerous toys from entering the U.S. Now the government says it applies to the sale of used goods, even those at garage sales. Sell recalled items and you could be fined at up to $100,000 each. Like this pack and play. They could theoretically go under the playpen and get their neck stuck here in this bar. So any pack and play that doesn't have that warning label on it is recalled until they can add that warning label. We're shocked. We actually returned another one to get this one because this one was like the best one on the market. I own this same exact product, not knowing that at home, the exact same color and everything. How do you expect someone just to come in and know? I mean, like I said, I own this piece myself. Not knowing about recalls won't excuse resellers from penalties, so the CPSC has a 24-page handbook they say makes it easy for them to cross-check their items. The government is trying to eliminate garage sales altogether so that we can increase our trade deficit by purchasing new products we can't afford from Walmart that were imported from China. In Long Island, some towns are banning garage sales because they attract illegal immigrants who they claim drive down home prices by bringing noise, crime, and clutter to their once peaceful communities. Police today can arrest and detain American citizens who are caught driving without a license, but they have no power to check the status of an illegal immigrant. Americans are becoming increasingly frustrated with impoverished immigrants that are barely living above subsistence levels because we are being forced to subsidize their standard of living in America. One NIA member recently saw a $20 monthly increase in their cable television bill specifically for the addition of new mandated Spanish channels. We cannot support them. We don't have the economy. And anybody that believes that they do, invite them over to your house to share your meals every day. Take more money out of your pocket and your family's mouths and give it to them. Everyone loves to be altruistic, but when it comes at a cost where you can't afford it, I'm not going to do it. These illegal immigrants come to the U.S. expecting everything when our country doesn't even have any resources left to take care of its own citizens. The economy is in decline. We don't have the jobs. We have to create 125,000 jobs a month just to stay equal for population growth and new people coming into the workforce. We cannot support people that don't belong here when we can't support our own. Unfortunately, getting rid of illegal immigrants will not solve any of America's fiscal problems. The illegal immigrant issue is mainly being used by the mainstream media as a distraction from the real economic issues. In fact, the underlying fundamentals of our economy are so unsound that we are receiving countless reports from NIA members who know illegal immigrants that are choosing to return to their country of origin. I came here eight months ago. I cannot find work. I can't earn money. I want to return to my country. Although the federal government says they are making it their top priority to deport illegal immigrants, the truth is they are actually making it a lot tougher for them to leave the country. Instead of ushering illegal immigrants out of the U.S. at the border, the government is wasting money we don't have to process and then formally remove illegal immigrants who wish to leave the country. This has the unintended consequence of encouraging illegal immigrants to stay in this country because if they left formally and then came back in the future, they risk being prosecuted criminally. Many NIA members who have dual citizenship with other countries are already acting now to get out of harm's way before U.S. hyperinflation and the collapse of society. NIA believes that there are now far greater opportunities to live a happy and successful life in Mexico rather than the U.S. We are constantly hearing from many Mexicans who are enjoying comfortable lives in Mexico with an income as low as $1,500 per month. Among the draws, proximity to the U.S., lower taxes and overall living costs that are 30 to 40 percent cheaper. 
Here in Southern California, you can expect to pay in the millions for a place on the beach, but in Mexico, a similar piece of property in a gated community starts in the mid 300s. Most Mexicans we know have a car and a house in Mexico that they have paid cash for with no debt. Not only is the cost of living in Mexico a lot lower than the U.S., but there are now growing employment opportunities in Mexico due to the booming gold and silver mining industry. The only Americans who will be able to survive and thrive in the U.S. will be those who immediately take their wealth and use it to purchase gold and silver. Americans who stop transacting in U.S. dollars and move their wealth to precious metals are effectively opting out of the Federal Reserve's criminal enterprise. NIA is now seeing signs that the U.S. government is fearful of Americans abandoning the U.S. dollar. The U.S. debt Ponzi scheme is about to be exposed and in a last ditch effort to keep the dollar bubble propped up, the U.S. government is beginning to take steps to force Americans to stay in the dollar. Hidden inside the recently passed Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was a new law that had nothing to do with health care. Section 9006 of the health care bill requires that beginning January 1st, 2012, all businesses and self-employed individuals must report every purchase of goods and services over $600. This will mean that every time a company sells a one ounce gold coin or even a half an ounce gold coin, they will have to fill out a 1099 form and file it with the IRS. NIA believes that this new law is definitely one of the top signs that a U.S. societal collapse is right around the corner. Imagine the thousands of non-productive IRS employees that will have to be hired when this law goes into effect. Every precious metal dealer in the U.S. will have to hire more employees to comply with this unnecessary regulation, which means you will likely pay a higher premium to purchase gold and silver. In the years ahead, as we begin to see a massive outbreak of price inflation, $600 might not even be enough to purchase a loaf of bread. Imagine businesses being forced to file 1099s every time you buy food. In another disheartening sign of what could soon occur on a nationwide basis, the city of Philadelphia is now proposing a new law that will require the operators of pawn shops and precious metal businesses to snap a digital photo of each customer and to obtain both an electronic imprint of the client's left thumb and a copy of the client's state-issued photo ID. This info, along with pictures and descriptions of the item purchased, will be entered into their police department's major crimes unit database. Once again, the government is using the concern of stolen property and money laundering by drug dealers to infringe on the privacy of honest Americans. NIA is also hearing reports from members across the country who recycle water bottles and soda cans at local recycling plants. Brand new rules now require them to give their ID to the recycling plant workers who enter their personal information into a computer database, including the exact items that were recycled before they pay them for their goods. They must also sign papers that allow the recycling plant to give this information to the local police and any other law enforcement authorities. The government is taking every step possible to put every American citizen under a microscope and closely track every single thing we do and every transaction we make. In Indiana, there is now a state law that no matter how old you look, you must provide and have your ID scanned to buy alcohol. NIA has confirmed that two separate and unrelated men in Indiana, after buying alcohol more than once at the same location, were sent emails inquiring about if they need help overcoming alcoholism. Indiana is also beginning to scan IDs for cigarettes. Before long, it's possible that the new health care bill will bankrupt all private health insurance providers and all Americans will be completely dependent on the government for health care. Imagine if when the time comes, the government knows you smoke 1.2 packs of cigarettes per day and they decide to deny you coverage for smoking-related diseases. NIA believes that what's going on in Indiana is just a test run for new federal regulations that will require a national ID to be scanned when purchasing any item, regardless of what it is. Have you noticed lately that if you spend cash at the supermarket, the cashier will look at you like you're crazy? Even businesses that were once considered strictly cash businesses are now discouraging the use of cash and logging every cash transaction. 
One NIA member recently went to a strip club and handed a $20 bill to a dancer. She refused to take it and told him that he would have to take it to the manager so that he could log it in a book for accounting purposes. Americans today have become dependent on unemployment checks, food stamps, and other government handouts that have not only guaranteed that we will soon experience hyperinflation, but they have the unintended consequence of making any future economic recovery absolutely impossible. Many Americans are no longer motivated to find work and become productive members of society. Some Americans are outright abusing the system that hardworking productive Americans are forced to support. One NIA member owns the most popular bakery in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. A customer recently entered his store and asked for them to produce a custom-made birthday cake that looks exactly like her very high-end designer handbag. After saying that producing the cake would be no problem and that the price would be $150, the customer said that she would like to place the order and asked if the bakery would accept food stamps as payment. Instead of working as hard as possible to live the best lives as possible, most Americans are satisfied with their unemployment checks and food stamps. They spend their time worrying about the personal lives of others by watching reality shows, reading TMZ, and gossiping about their favorite musicians and sports heroes. This is reminiscent of how during the U.S. Great Depression, Americans became obsessed with going to the movies as it offered them a chance to escape the heat, the cold, and the loneliness of their bleak personal lives. With America's obsession with Hollywood now reaching epidemic proportions, it's a sure sign that a societal collapse will soon occur. NIA has direct knowledge of many Americans who are living in Section 8 housing while receiving unemployment checks and food stamps but are making absolutely no attempt to find a job. Some of them have had offers to work for $15 to $20 per hour, but they turn these employment opportunities down out of fear that they may lose their housing, food, and other entitlements. The 40-year-old friend of one NIA member who was living off of government entitlements in California recently said that he will come out of retirement for $25 per hour. Anything less wouldn't be worth it. President Obama just signed a $26 billion bailout for cash-strapped states in which $10 billion are going to protect 160,000 teachers' jobs. NIA believes that these funds will do nothing to help education in America and that the entire U.S. education system needs a total overhaul. The system now is built where only those that know how to think like they do become members of the corporation, be chained to one kind of thinking, then school is great for you. If you could regurgitate, repeat, suck up brown nose, and do everything they tell you to do, you will be a success in school, and who knows, someday you could even become a middle manager in some corporation with two weeks vacation pay. The school system stinks. NIA has been researching our nation's school districts, trying to see if any of them have come up with any brilliant ideas on how to improve our nation's schools. As smart as our nation's school board members claim to be, it appears as though almost none of them have come up with any ideas other than to beg their state and federal governments for more funds. The most radical idea we have heard is what was just approved in Mount Olive, New Jersey. They will no longer give out any D's. And that means that any middle school or high school student earning anything less than a 70 or a C will actually get an F. What do you have against D's? Well, I, I don't personally have anything against these other than it's unacceptable. NIA has spoken to hundreds of school teachers across America, and one thing has been made very clear. If more than 10% of a class fails, teachers are put on an improvement plan, and in order to avoid this, teachers are artificially manipulating the grades of students to make sure there is never more than a 10% failure rate. So explain to us how it works, because we understand that in your school district, 384 students a month ago in June ended the school year with a D as a final grade. What happens to those 384 students come September? NIA guarantees that the overwhelming majority of those students will receive a C next year, not because they studied harder, but because teachers manipulated the grades in order for them to look good. Fox News exposes this scheme as grade inflation 
which was probably the most Fox has done all year to warn Americans about the dangers of inflation. This causes the school board president to literally become speechless. Do you fear that you will see grade inflation from teachers so that they don't get in trouble for having to give somebody a less than a C? Will they then give everybody a C so that they're not in trouble with you? One, I don't believe so because I believe in the integrity of the system that approve it. <laughs> they, they keep faking the scores so that it makes it look like the kids are doing better. So they keep getting federal aid and those teachers get bonuses. So they cook the books even at that level. Students today are taught in high school about the need to get deeply into debt to attend college for a degree that is worthless because everyone else has one. With U.S. youth unemployment today at a record high, we should be teaching high school students the essential skills needed to start their own businesses immediately after graduating high school. Instead of spending $100,000 to support the lifestyles of professors and administrators who failed in the real world, students should be investing that money to start their own business. Unfortunately, students today are completely dependent on finding non-existent jobs and don't have the knowledge or motivation to go out and create employment on their own. Privately run-for-profit colleges like DeVry University are outright scams that are taking advantage of high unemployment in the U.S. today along with the government's willingness to give out easy student loans. When I walked into this place, I said, I will graduate with honors, and I did. And they got jobs like that. I mean, the next day. I work in operations. Software engineering. Accounting clerk. I just got a job as a web designer. Um, really good job. It's actually kind of like my dream job. DeVry claims to have a job placement rate of 90% within six months after earning a degree. Yet only 38% of those who took out student loans to attend DeVry are repaying their loans on time. Students in these phony universities openly cheat on their exams right in front of their so-called professors. Not only is a degree from DeVry or any comparable school completely worthless, but NIA believes they are worse than worthless. If you apply for a job and show them your degree from DeVry, it is likely they will completely avoid you for being stupid enough to have gone there. Disturbingly, the U.S. government is now providing foreign aid to subsidize the creation of overseas jobs in South Asia that are replacing jobs that would have been in the U.S. The United States Agency for International Development has launched a $36 million program to train 3,000 IT specialists in South Asia. Following their training, these workers will be placed with outsourcing vendors in the region that provides services to American companies looking to take advantage of Asia's low labor costs. Government employees today make more money than private sector workers in 83% of all comparable occupations, with average hourly pay being 20 to 40% higher than wages in the private sector. Once you include health insurance and other benefits, the average federal government worker received $123,049 in total compensation in 2009 compared to the average private sector worker's total compensation of $61,051. Some local and state governments also pay outrageous wages. Robert Rizzo was being paid a total of $1.5 million in annual compensation as the city manager of Bell, California, a small town with a population of 36,000 people. The assistant city manager in that same town was being paid $845,000 per year, with the police chief being paid $770,000 per year. All three of them were promised pensions when they retire for the majority of their salaries. Two LA Times reporters uncovered these outrageous salaries when they were investigating another matter in a neighboring town. After it was made public, residents of Bell, California literally marched to City Hall and forced these three to resign from their positions. Just disgusting what they're doing with our money. It's all going into their pockets. I have lived in this city for 38 years. I have never seen before this kind of behavior from the city government. They're serving the people. They're not, make, they're not supposed to be making money out of us. NIA believes the most disturbing part about Bell, California is not what these government employees pay themselves, but how no city residents took enough interest in their local government to discover this until the media uncovered it years later. Bell, California just saw its debt rating downgraded to junk. 
and will likely soon default on its debt, all because residents of the city were simply too preoccupied to care. What's taking place in Bell, California is just a microcosm of what's taking place in our federal government today. First Lady Michelle Obama recently went on vacation in Spain on the taxpayer's dime. Our country is broke, yet we were forced to spend $241,000 for the cost of round-trip transportation, hotel rooms, and 70 security personnel. How out of touch could Obama administration be that they put on a spectacle of a vacation like that at a time when people can't pay their mortgages, when a time when people are losing their jobs, when a time that unemployment keeps going up, they're out of touch. They are the royalty, the elite, just like the stars in Hollywood. It's show business for ugly people in Washington. It's star power. They have no idea how the average person lives or feels because of the way they're treated. The U.S. Treasury is so pathetic that they are now even accepting online donations just to try to pay down the debt. The U.S. has no way of paying back its $13.4 trillion national debt and $81 trillion in total obligations. Yet there is still no widespread outrage in this country about deficit spending. Politicians continue to promise more giveaways and lower taxes, and Americans fall for it because they are unaware of the hyperinflation that awaits. Americans continuously get brainwashed by the mainstream media to elect both Democrats and neocon Republicans who do nothing other than rapidly increase the size of government. When I was a kid, growing up during the Cold War, I used to hear about the communists in power, the party, the party. Yeah, the party's still in power. But instead of having one name, communist, they have two names, Republican, Democrat. It's one party, party members, party heads, party whips, the party, the party. They're having a party, and you're paying for it. Right now, there are candidates debating about the Constitution in this country. In fact, some of these candidates are holding up the Constitution and saying how they're going to restore it. Yet the next sentence out of their mouth is how they're going to reform an entitlement program or how they're going to take money from a group of people to offer a tax deduction to another group of people. Redistribution of wealth is not in the Constitution, and neither is a democracy. The Founding Fathers set up a republic so that we did not have mob rule, so that we could not vote each other gifts, because they knew that if you continue to re-elect politicians that promised you more of other people's money, we would eventually destroy this nation. In order for Obama to reach his goal of lowering the U.S. budget deficit down to $752 billion in 2015, the White House is projecting an average GDP growth rate of 5.58% over the next five years. In the second quarter of 2010, U.S. GDP grew by only 1.6%. To get this dismal 1.6% growth rate, the U.S. government had to spend $3.7 trillion on bailouts, stimulus bills, the buying of mortgage-backed securities, and other commitments. The U.S. government bought GDP growth in 2009 by implementing its destructive cash for clunkers and home buyer tax rebate programs. Recently in Los Angeles, California, my friend had their car stolen. It was a 1994 Camry. And we were wondering, why would anybody want to steal this old vehicle? You know what the cops told them? That because of the Cash for Clunkers program, because of this supposedly government stimulus plan that was supposed to help our economy, thefts are up for older cars because the thieves need the parts. Parts are in huge demand for older vehicles because the government literally destroyed a working asset and sent it off to China. The U.S. is so desperate to generate revenue now that they are taking advantage of America's concerns about inflation by selling forever stamps. Stamp prices have increased by 475% over the past 40 years. 
The U.S. Postal Service claims that if you go to the post office and purchase a forever stamp today, you will be able to use it to mail a first class letter at any time in the future. NIA considers forever stamps to be a scam. The government is spending the funds they generate from the sale of forever stamps and won't have the resources to meet these obligations in the future. NIA is confident that the U.S. government will soon propose more stimulus spending while the Federal Reserve unleashes additional quantitative easing. Before long, the government will go bust and will either default on its social security obligations or print the money to pay them, creating hyperinflation. Most likely, the government will choose the hyperinflation route, and American social security checks won't be worth enough to pay for the gas needed to drive to the bank to cash them. Their only value will be as toilet paper. Only then will there be a real revolution where Americans march to Washington to remove those who have destroyed our nation, just like they did in Bell, California after it was too late. Americans today are too busy waiting 12 hours in line across countless city blocks to be the first to purchase the new iPhone 4. The $700 they spend for a defective device that will break within a year could instead be used to buy 39 ounces of silver. 39 ounces of silver will be enough to feed a family of four for six months during hyperinflation. Those with iPhones will likely recycle them for the trace amounts of precious metals inside which will be enough to buy food for only one week. I mean, can you imagine, I mean, hundreds of people waiting in line around just to get the new iPhone when, you I, know? I, I think that that's the life that those people want to continue to live and will live that life till the last minute because they were afraid of change and they're afraid of this other life that, in my opinion, could be much better. Um, you know, get rid of all the material items, uh, get, get rid of uh, all of these stores, go out and produce your own food and grow your own garden and have your own livestock. You don't have to have, you know, a giant piece of property to do that, but they're afraid and by the time they wake up, I think it'll be too late. That's my opinion. A year ago, most mainstream economists were predicting that we would see a U-shaped economic recovery by now. But you think this is going to be like a U-shaped recovery? A U-shaped recovery, a U-shaped kind of recovery. A triple U-shaped recovery. NIA said a year ago that the economic recovery was phony and prices were rising only due to inflation. There clearly was no U-shaped recovery, and today most mainstream economists have changed their tune and are calling for a double-dip recession. The truth is, the recession never ended. Wall Street benefited from the Federal Reserve's 0% interest rates, which allowed them to recklessly speculate risk-free and pay out record bonuses. Meanwhile, the rest of America has been suffering more than ever and will soon feel the consequences of the Wall Street bailouts through massive price inflation. Tensions are rapidly escalating across the country between the poor who are suffering the most from inflation and the wealthy who have benefited from it. Hey, this is a public place. Welcome to Venice Beach, California. Where tensions are rising between homeowners and the motor homeless. That's a great place. Venice is great. Who take over entire streets living out of campers, vans, buses, trucks, and RVs. They're not going to be able to shut down this place because it's the ocean. As you can see, Venice has become an urban RV park. Along with it, Noise, drugs, alcohol, prostitution, and human waste on the curb and in residents' yards. They take up very, very dear parking. They um, leave a lot of trash. Occasionally, they use people's front yards as toilets. If there's such a big problem, get a porta potty and put it in your backyard, someplace for somebody to take a dump. All right, you can afford. If you can pay twelve hundred dollars a month for rent, you can afford a porta potty. The same people who told us that there wasn't going to be a recession. They're now telling us that the recession ended back in June of 2009. Yet tell that to the people who are on the unemployment line. Food stamps are up, foreclosures are up, just in September of 2010. Here we're supposed to be through the worst of it. And we had the most foreclosures on record in the history of the United States. Over 100,000 foreclosures just in September. Long-term unemployment continues to stay at record highs. Yet they're telling us the recession's over. In every single one of our documentaries, we've urged Americans to get out of the U.S. dollar and invest into gold and silver. Our first documentary was Hyperinflation Nation, which we released in June of 2009, and since then, gold has risen by 48% and silver by 74%.
The longer Americans wait to get out of the U.S. dollar and into precious metals, the more their purchasing power they're going to lose. It's that simple. The only thing that the Federal Reserve can do to stop gold and silver from rising and restore confidence in the dollar is to raise interest rates from their current level of 0% to a level that is higher than real price inflation. There are educated people, even college professors right now, teaching our kids that America is a free market economy. Yet when Ben Bernanke speaks, or even the very thought of the anticipation of him speaking, it moves prices all across the country, all across the world. That is not a free market and that is definitely not capitalism. According to the government, price inflation is 1.5% year to year. Yet Ben Bernanke, his target rate is at least 2%. And he's going to do this through quantitative easing. But if you look at the way the government calculates inflation, calculates price inflation, it's fatally flawed. The National Inflation Association believes price inflation is at least 5%. Now, what do you think is gonna happen when Ben Bernanke does meet his target rate of 2%? Do you think that 5% might jump up to a real inflation rate of 10%, possibly even spiraling out of control? Because remember, the world reserve currency is the US dollar. And because of this status, there's over $10 trillion held by foreigners. If this money comes back to America, it will come back to bite us in the worst possible way. We could see an epidemic of hyperinflation here in the United States of America. It will be impossible for Ben Bernanke to ever raise interest rates higher than the real rate of price inflation because of the size and scope of our national debt. Our national debt is now 15 times larger than it was when Paul Volcker prevented hyperinflation in 1980 by raising interest rates to 20%. Our GDP has only grown one and a half times larger since then. If Bernanke were to raise interest rates in any substantial way, Americans' mortgage payments would double and our budget deficit would explode by trillions of dollars per year. I believe that Ben Bernanke is under pressure by the President and Congress to keep interest rates at artificially low levels until the dollar is basically worthless. Americans are living in a fiat world gone insane. Today, gold and gold mining shares account for only less than 1% of the total world financial assets. From 1921 to 1981, gold and gold mining shares accounted for more than 25% of world financial assets. Even if all of the world's non-gold assets were to decline by two-thirds, gold would still need to go to $10,000 per ounce for this figure to get back to 25%. It is absolutely shocking to me that the mainstream media is proclaiming that there is a gold bubble, when in fact, in 2010, Americans have only bought $2.7 billion worth of gold. And guess how much worth of bonds? $155 billion worth of bonds. That's 57 times more bonds than gold. Now you tell me, are we in a gold bubble? It's absolutely shocking to me how clueless investment advisors are today in the US. I mean, can you believe that they're telling Americans, take 25% of your savings and put it into US treasuries or bonds, and take the other 25% of your savings and keep it in US dollar cash. I mean, 50% of your savings and you're putting it into dollar denominated assets that are basically worthless pieces of paper. Now what drives me nuts is the fact that not only are these investment advisors telling you to put 50% of your savings into dollar denominated assets that are basically worthless in my opinion, but you're lucky if they tell you to put 5% at most into gold, the most real and stable asset that the world has ever seen. I mean, Americans are being brainwashed right now as if gold is the risky and speculative investment, when in, when in fact it's, it's the dollar. I mean, the only reason why gold is volatile right now is because it's priced in unstable dollars. Many have said what the Founding Fathers faced was impossible, and what we face is impossible. But now is the time, and you are the person. Join us at Inflation.us for insightful reporting, for alternative investments to protect your family from the consequences of reckless and out-of-control government. We are the people. We have the power. We are the resistance.